Next, a seven-minute interview with Representative Sarah Feigenholz four years after her sponsored bill was passed, allowing Illinois adoptees to receive their original birth certificate. Representative Feigenholz discusses the impact possessing the birth certificate has had on adoptees. Following the interview, we air the documentary A Simple Piece of Paper, which follows the lives of several Illinois adoptees, including Representative Feigoltz herself, after they've received their birth certificate. We see their journey as these now adults attempt to use this newfound information to find out more about their birth parents and themselves. This runs about one hour and ten minutes. Representative Sarah Fagenholtz, as we just saw the guess, world premiere of this movie about the bill that you sponsored to allow uh, adopted children to have their see their birth certificate, and this is as we celebrated tonight the fourth anniversary of that. What, what are your thoughts now uh, on this evening? Well, I mean, of course, uh, you know, this uh, was a very special bill to me uh, because of my own personal experience. But beyond that, um, given the fact that there were a quarter, there are a quarter of million adoptees in Illinois and I knew that there were many folks who also wanted to get a copy of their birth certificate so that they can start to learn a little bit about the first chapter of their life which I believe is a basic human right. Um, it, it, it was a great victory um, and as a legislator of course we have to protect my, the minority as we permit the majority access. Um, so it turns out that the way we did this was really good. It was really kind of perfect, actually. And the good thing about being an adopted person and having an experience, uh, personal experience, is um, you can kind of legislate from the gut, if you will. And um, the good news about our bill is it was used as a model for four dates after we passed ours uh, so successfully. There are 10,500 adopted people who were born in Illinois who know a lot more about who they are and their first families. Uh, and as you can clearly see by the crowd in the room and the emotion, um, how meaningful this was. Very rarely do we get a chance to uh, have this kind of personal, very personal experience and, um, and to actually feel good about something that we know was very, very meaningful to touch so many people's lives. There are people in this room, had they not gotten a copy of that original birth certificate, would have never met a sibling um, or another family member who they were biologically related to. And as you can see, it's a life-changing experience. I was going to say, in the movie, we saw the story of know seven or so different people and how the law impacted their lives. You were one of them. I didn't know you were in the yeah. And we start off seeing you going and, and getting your birth certificate. Tell us at your own experience. What was that like emotionally? What was it like before not knowing and then what was it like for you to be able to see the birth certificate? Well, I never thought the day would come. It's, it's almost like, you know, I think there, the common theme was that we could hardly believe, we, the collective we of adoptees, um, could hardly believe that this was a reality. It was mind-numbing, actually. Um, I don't know that there's a word that really describes how it feels to be able to finally get to see that piece of paper. Um, but um, it, it opened a lot of doors for a lot of people. Um, and it, it's the restoration of a basic human right. Um, and it's an expression of knowing who you are, where you came from, um, is a natural desire. It's not a, it's not a passing fancy or a curiosity. And for so many of us, the health implications are enormous. So yeah, getting updated say this. genetic information, um, you know, predisposition to, you know, having the BRCA gene, having genetic information is, the power of this millennium, you know, and um, the only path, I mean, having, you know, as a legislator, my mother was a physician, actually. Uh, my adoptive mom was a physician. So I understood the relevance of good medical history. Um, so for so many reasons, this film um, it, it stands in testament to how well we did this in Illinois, and it's been 
an extraordinary tool and a very healing for the adoption community to kind of get together and uh, celebrate this wonderful thing that happened in Illinois. Illinois is the largest, has passed a law that was the largest expansion of adoptee rights and identity in the, in the country, in the, in the United States. So, um, yeah. Are you still to this day being contacted by lawmakers in other states asking you about the whys yes. and wherefores? I think that, you know, this became a model piece of legislation and, you know, four very large states have passed this law since we did. Um, Illinois is the fifth populous state and so a lot of times you have, uh, legislators have to look at big states and say, well, Illinois is got the, you know, a very, you know, um, you know is a, a tough state. If they could get this done and do it right, we can do it too. Come on in, the water's uh, just fine. You know, uh, for me watching it, and I was not an adoptee, it, it made me realize how much we take for granted that when we know who our brothers and sisters are, we know our whole family history, you just take those things for granted. And then to see, as an adoptee, how it, it's hard to, I, for any of us to understand, but I guess you kind of walk around with this big just question mark this void as an adoptee that's always somewhat nagging in the back of your mind, I guess. It's very true, very true. And, um, you know, I, I think that um, children and adults do better with the truth. And I think if you take a look at adoption practice now, you see a lot of young families where um, they're celebrating Gotcha Day. Uh, the children know that they were adopted. There is no shame. There is no secrecy. Very often, in current adoption practice, there's a lot of contact with the birth family uh, because I believe they see perhaps some of the cruelty of, of some of the old policies that were in place. So um, we've done it right moving forward and we've done it right. We've taken care of adoptees of past by passing this law. So we have a lot to be proud of. Well, congratulations. Thanks. 631, a bill for an act regarding adoption. Third reading of this House bill. The lady from Cook, Representative Feigenholz. Ladies and gentlemen, House Bill 5428 would finally allow adult adopted persons to have a copy of his or her original birth certificate. Discussion. There is a lot of controversy about providing the original birth certificate to the adopted person. It is reversing a decision that a woman made not to know their child. We lived in fear. It's my call. I raised her. I want to protect the confidentiality that was made when kids were adopted years ago, mine included. This bill does not infringe upon that. It's about basic human rights. It's about the need for people to know who they are. This is not about the restoration of parental rights. Why do I want my birth certificate, my original birth certificate? It, it's mine. It's, it was my birth. It's about me. My name is on it. It pertains to me. Under current law, you have no right to that birth certificate. Why? It's who I am. Why can't I know? I think the proper public policy of the state of Illinois should be to respect the finality of adoption. It's just to have continuity in one's life, to understand where you started, the beginning being as important as any other part of your life. There's been a lot of talk about the birth certificate. An adopted child has a birth certificate and it has her mother and father listed on it. Without knowing that, that background, it's all dark, it's all black, it's all incomplete. I just really want to know. How could you not want to know? How could anyone think that this would be the best thing for adoptees to keep their identity away from them? It's so wrong in, in so many ways. This is a bill about adults who need access to genetic and health information. Insurance companies denying the payment. Um, because I can't prove anybody in my immediate family has breast or ovarian cancer. The legislators and people that, you know, don't believe that this is right for you to find out, I just don't think they understand that it's more than just knowing something, it's, it's, it's a feeling. That is actually more, much more than a piece of paper, at least to me. Um, it's the idea of possibly um, 
getting some answers. I know what you're trying to do. That child, that surrendered child, Adult filling out child. the right form, can go and ask for this birth certificate. Birth parents can come forward and fill out a contact but what if they don't respond? form. So there's but what your if firewall. They don't respond? We've been debating this issue for years now. We have a very personal difference on this bill. I think it's a bad public policy. Vote against this bill. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, please vote yes for this bill. In recent years, several states have reversed sealed records laws, providing their adult adopted citizens with their original birth certificates. In 2011, after Representative Sarah Feigenholz's 14-year legislative battle to pass an adoptee birthright bill, Illinois became the largest state in the Union to ever grant adult adopted citizens access. Opposition groups, wanting the records to remain sealed, cited concerns about privacy, but birth parents in Illinois were provided with the ability to redact their name from the birth certificates, if they so chose. And so Illinois joined in the experiment that began in Alabama and Oregon at the turn of the 21st century, reversing their sealed records laws. What happens when a state allows its adopted citizens to receive the record of their own birth? Why is this considered necessary? And what are the outcomes? In the first weeks that the Illinois Adoptee Access Law went into effect, thousands of adopted citizens from across the state, as well as Illinois adoptees from around the country and the world, sent in their applications and waited for their birth certificates to arrive. These are a handful of their stories. I was adopted, and I'll, I'll never forget I was campaigning and I ran into a woman who did post-adoption searches. She said to me, make sure that adopted people can get a copy of their birth certificate. It's really cruel that they can't do it. And I thought, this was what I had to do. The first year I sponsored this bill was in 1997. It took a long time. We are getting in a car, literally, at 5 a.m. to go down to Springfield so we can get there by 9. There's a few of us who just feel compelled to be at the place where the applications are going to be filed. Representative Sarah Feigenholz of Chicago was adopted, and she says the document allows her to learn about her identity. This is a simple restoration of a basic human right. Birth parents can still remain anonymous by filing a request through the state. I just have talked to so many people and I know how much it means to them. It's just kind of all coming to a head. And we're almost there. Is it on the corner here? Are we lost here? It's at Ridgeland. Where's Ridgeland? If you could do this in like 30 seconds, I'd be really happy. Because I'm a nervous wreck right now. I'm driving like grandma I ain't gonna work with me today. I never thought I would do this. I would like to apply for my original birth certificate. So what did it feel like to finally get this information? Very emotional. Over the next weeks and months, one by one, adoptees began to receive their original birth certificates. Ready? Um, the person, my birth mother, told me my birth father was 
is not the person listed on the birth certificate. But it's thrilling to hold this piece of paper for the first time in my life. This will show that I was actually born, <laughs> that I actually see that in writing. It's my birth certificate. I get to see it for the first time. Were you born on your birthday? Yes. <laughs> When the birth certificate came, it says my name is Clara Wyka, which is her name. And that brought tears to my eyes to think that she named me after her. Yeah. I got it. I got it. I got it. Oh, God. It's it. This is it. This is me. It tells me where I was born. It tells me, tells how old my mom was when she had me. It tells what my dad did. I never dreamed it was going to actually have all this information. I don't know. And I was number, I was number three. I knew I had siblings out there. I thought I would die, I guess, before I ever found anybody. I, I did not know I had another sister. And right when I first seen her, I, I told my friend, I said, that's my sister. I told him, I said, just think how many times we might have seen each other somewhere and didn't even know, you know? A store, grocery store, anything like that. I had another family in the past, and I regret that I haven't been able to be with them. Sixty years I've wanted a brother and a sister or somebody. <laughs> now I've got them and it's like unreal. I had this idea all these years that the building that the records were in was some big gray stone, venerable old edifice with guards marching back and forth and Rottweilers. It never dawned on me that it could just be an ordinary little place. This is Mildred, my mom. She was a nurse in the Navy in World War II and my dad was in the Army. Before they adopted me, my mom had had five miscarriages. This is my dad's writing. In case of incapacitation or death of Samuel Bronstein and Mildred Bronstein, do not in any way advise or show to our daughter Linda. That's how threatened they were about me ever wanting to look for any other family. This was just my paperwork with the names clipped out. Full of holes, the mother's name and baby girl, last name clipped out. And I thought my father had done this. But I later learned that lots of adoptees have papers that look just like this from the state of Illinois. Illinois has been my opponent. This state has kept me from knowing who I am. Imagine what it feels like in your guts, knowing that the state of Illinois doesn't even think you have the right to know your name. I don't know how long it'll take to get it, and I don't know what I'm going to get back, but whatever I get back, it's mine. Now there's something in here that I've been waiting so long to know and never expected to know. And seeing it in a regular envelope like this, you know, in my head, like my birth certificate would be this fancy gold plaque with engraving on it. And because I've invested so much thought and hope and emotion and heart and uh, what might be there. So I'm, uh, I'm diving in. Oh. Uh, okay. Wow. Whew. <laughs> huh. 
I've had two versions of the name for 20 years. And um, it's not this name. I'm just going to Google her name, even though this is from 1953. out all of this need and craving and emotions that I had all these years I thought that if anything could fill in that empty place in me it would be to have those people in my life and you know what I don't think I need them <laughs> I think maybe I have everything I need the day after I talked with my birth mother. The next morning, I went to visit my mom, as I do on Sundays. She's 92 and has Alzheimer's. And as soon as I saw her, I just felt so grateful that I wound up with Mildred and Sam as my parents. And it wasn't a fairy tale, but they're my right family. And I don't think I ever felt that before. I know a lot of people like to use the word closure for this, and I feel whatever's the opposite of it. I feel open, I feel freed. And I would also tell my parents, you never had any reason to be scared. You weren't gonna lose me if I found out who my birth mother was. You were never going to lose me. Adoptees often feel they have to justify their desire for their original birth certificate, even to themselves. I really need to get this medical information, and that's kind of where I'm letting my mind and my heart sit right now. I don't know anything about what is in my medical background. It's just so important to get that information. Not everyone who is adopted is wanting to find their birth parents, and I'm not even processing possibly meeting anyone or anything like that. But when an adoptee is finally allowed to know where they came from, long buried feelings can surface, as was the case with Mora. I found my birth mother. An outreach letter went out, you know, seven weeks, which I know isn't a lot of time, but when you're anxious and you're waiting, it just seems a lifetime. My phone rings and I knew it was her. It was awesome. I mean, it was, I'm, I'm still so fresh. I literally was just so overwhelmed. I didn't cry, I didn't get upset. You know, she thanked me for giving her the gift of letting her know that I was happy and good. And I asked her if she knew about the law changing in Illinois, because she is on the West Coast. And she said she had heard, and she hoped that that would lead to some sort of opening with us. One of the biggest questions I probably had was, has this person thought about me at all throughout these past 34 years? I just wanted to know, did you think of me? And she did. 
I didn't think I would feel disconnected to her. And every time I, I talk to her, I get excited for, for what's next. I feel so much lighter. The whole weight was lifted off my shoulders once I got this, this birth certificate. I'm just thankful. And I hope we have a relationship that will last throughout our lifetime. One thing I do want to say, having been in law enforcement for over 24 years, it's so important that you find the truth, that you get as close to the truth as you can. For every investigation that I've ever worked, it's always about more information because lives depend on it. Good decisions depend on it. There are a number of feelings that I've gone through about not knowing the first chapter of my life powerlessness and grief and a uh, sense of, of unworthiness. But with this new law in Illinois of having the right to my original birth certificate, I feel a sense of hope about my future. It feels right to me for you all to be here on the 15th of January, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, who so believed in equal rights. And see, for most of you, you've been with your original families, and you've had your original birth certificate, and you've really not thought anything of it. But for adoptees here in Illinois, it's an extraordinary piece of paper. OK, I do think I need a drum roll. <laughs> And my son, the only person that I know of that I'm biologically related to, is going to present that envelope to me. What a privilege. Drum roll. Okay. What was the first thing everybody wanted to know? My given name. And the second thing? When she came in, she said, I need to speak to Ronald Upshaw Sr. That's when I opened the door. I said, just say it, just say it. I mean, who are you and what is this about? And so I just said, um, I'm gonna trust God. Wanda Upshaw is my birth mother. And I did one of these numbers, standing where you are, and I said, oh my God, I see it. I see it. I said, you look just like her. I see the Upshaw all in you. And then she said, well, did she ever talk about me? I said, your mother talked about you many times uh, with tears in her eyes. She said, do you have any pictures of my mom? Unfortunately, I only had an obituary. Most people would think that it, it would be kind of sad because it's an obituary. But for me, seeing a picture of Wanda, you know, um, I just saw myself. I saw how I see myself. She discussed um, looking for you to no avail and that she hoped to find you. She said, but I rested. My daughter will find me. And uh, it happened just as she said. Yesterday was uh, 
was the um, anniversary of her passing and, um, and um, in need of a kidney that she never was able to get, her health um, deteriorated and she passed the, the day after her 49th birthday. If my mother had known me, I wonder if she would still be alive today. I don't, I think that the possibility exists and I could have created that possibility of giving her a kidney so that she would still be alive. She always referred to me as her little girl. I'm going to find my little girl. And she had consulted an attorney and she had looked into just what what to do and how to go about doing it. And she, she just wasn't able to get the information. Nobody was able to help her. Well, growing up as an only child, uh, this reunion, this, this finding of my brother has just been it's been great, you know, to be an older sister, have a little brother, that we can be a part of each other's lives from here on out. I know my mom felt a bit threatened by the idea that I would want to search for my birth family. However, I really think that all the members of the triad, the adoptive parents, birth parents, and adoptees, we all really want the same things. And it's, it's about being family and, and being close and, and living the best lives that we can. Uh, when I got the birth certificate, I just pondered it. I'm a father and a husband and all of these things. I know who I am. But it's so nice to know who I am biologically, too, after the fact, at age 72. This is a picture of my birth mother, which was given to me by one of the first cousins. You know, had the records been open, I could have introduced her to Sue and our children, and she could have seen that, that she provided me with a good life. If you could talk to Tom's birth mother, what would you have said to her? I don't know. <laughs> I think that it's so unfair that she went to her grave without ever knowing how he turned out. And I can cry for that. We might have become friends. And it wouldn't lessen my uh, love for my adoptive parents. They were my real parents. They raised me. They, they gave me all the opportunities I had in life. But that doesn't diminish uh, my appreciation for life itself. The birth mother gave, uh, and that's that's if there's a sadness, that's it. Not being able to acknowledge that and say thanks. It feels kind of odd that I have two. There's like two identities here, but I've often felt that way. Partially because I'm adopted, partially because I'm biracial. I live between two worlds. There it is. West Indies. She was from Africa. West Indies, or is that? It's in the Caribbean. Oh, wow. That's cool. Um, so I just don't have the words to explain it right now. It's just, uh, you know, I'm half West Indies, whatever that is, you know. it's. I think that's just amazing and cool. I mean, who would have ever known? Who would have ever known? I would have never known this. Are you intrigued now to, uh, to, to see if you have any siblings? That would be the... The whipped cream on a Sunday. Wow, I could have someone out there that sort of looks like me. I just love thinking about that. Look, this is my original birth certificate. Part of who I am is playing the flute. I picked it up one day and just started playing. But I can't say I'm a native flute player if I don't prove my native blood. I uh, started looking. I'm very, very lucky to have uh, my girlfriend, Carol. 
When I first met him, um, my sister was having some health issues and Bill was wonderful. Oh, we'll do everything we can to take care of her because family is so important to me. And I didn't, I didn't get it at first. She's helped me write letters. She's been behind me 120%. I looked really hard for my, my parents for many years and I could find nothing. If we were going to use our resources to hire a private investigator to find one person, it should be his birth mother. Because I figured my mother would be the hardest one to find. In fact, she wasn't. She was the easiest one to find. I do remember a morning when he was getting ready for work. He said, I have to find my birth mother. I think the time is running out. And indeed, that was just about the day she died. But I missed her by a couple of days. She had just passed. He received a report your birth mother is dead, and here is uh, contact information on her surviving sister, your aunt. Her sister knew nothing about me. Uh, and that, that was kind of a, a strange feeling that I uh, wasn't talked about. I don't know. I don't really know what to think about that. I heard some things come out of him that were harsh about what his birth mother may have felt and why she may have done what she did. He said to me, I bet my mother never missed me. And I said, I guarantee you wrong. I've known a few women who have given up children and, and they are always aware that there's a child out there. We tried to call and talk to her husband and he uh, said, don't call here again, click. So I didn't. I do have some half siblings up there and uh, I, Googled my little sister, sent her an email telling her what I was doing and who I was, and I never received a uh, response. That side of the family, I guess I've, I've done all I can. My dad, I've had his name now for about 12, 13 years. And having someone's name doesn't mean you can find them like that. My father's middle name, if it's on my original, uh, birth certificate, that'll take care of everything. Just knowing that, uh, we could pinpoint them. His birth certificate had his original name. It had his birth father's name. It was signed by his birth mother. It had everything in it that an adult adoptee can possibly hope to find in an original birth certificate. I now know my... Uh birth father's middle name, Laverne. Carol and me got a call. He had just spoken with my genealogist friend. She said, I may have found your dad's side. He was put in touch with a man. He said, I was estranged from my father. He left when I was five years old. I said, well, what was his middle name? And he said, Laverne. The original birth certificate confirmed that indeed the man he had just spoken with on the phone very recently was his brother or half-brother, if you will. They shared that father. Over 50 years I've been doing this and all of a sudden this and that comes within a couple of days of each other. I think somebody was telling me that's, that's okay, it's time for you to know this information. So it really happened right at the same time. She said, you tried to contact me a while back. I always told myself that if I ever came across any of the information you were looking for, that I would contact you. After I found out that my mother and your mother were the same, I looked in her wallet and found a picture of a little boy being held up by a woman. She always kept a picture of you in her wallet. I wanted you to know that. Her mom's wallet had not been touched since she died in the mid-90s. As she took out a picture, found another picture behind it that she had not known was there. On the back was written William Gary, which is Bill's name. And that's the picture. You can only imagine on his feeling of self-worth. I wasn't forgotten. 
there was a place in my mother's heart that I always occupied. There's no other way she could have reached from beyond the grave, if you will, and told Bill, I kept you in my heart all these years. It washed away that fear that he wasn't important to the woman who gave him life. He was important, and the fact that she had that photograph all those years proved it to him. I wasn't just a, a toss away to be forgotten. The word family is something that I've reevaluated in the 20 years I've been with Bill. I've, uh, my personal definition of it, I've examined a lot. It's been quite an education. <laughs> privilege. Really a privilege. <sighs> for many adoptees, the wait for the record is a long one. Mitch has known his birth mother's identity for years and hopes to perhaps learn who his birth father is. He fills out his application in mid-November. Christmas passes. His youngest son learns how to say daddy. Winter turns to spring. Well, you know, I waited 42 years, which is not a couple months, but oh my God, <laughs> you know, it's like, come on. And finally, the end of April, his original birth certificate arrives. I didn't think this day was ever going to come. I just can't believe I have it. That's been half the battle. My father's last name omitted, legally omitted. So I don't get the answer there. But I have this now. You know, and I first asked for this piece of paper 15 years ago. When you have a question and you ask it, and for years the answer is either I don't know or I can't tell you or I won't tell you. You know, to finally get to where you get an answer, whatever the answer is, if it's incomplete, if it's not the answer you hope for, it's still an answer. I opened the envelope and got to find out what my mother's name was. As I looked at the birth certificate, something I didn't even know was going to be on there, uh, towards the bottom of it was her signature. I actually started to cry because that was the closest contact I'd had yet with my mom. Just looking at her signature and, and thinking about her when I was born, my phone rings and it's from Florida. And right away she says, I'm your mom. And we just had this most amazing conversation. She told me that I was not a secret that all her family knew about me. She said, I named you after your father. She thought that he'd wanna contact me because when he found out that she had to give me up for adoption, um, he cried. I sent a card and, and some pictures to him and a week had gone by and I checked my email and there was an email saying, you found me. I wanna go back down to Florida to spend some more time with, uh, with my mom. And I wanna go up to Alaska. And my dad wants me to come up to Alaska to see him. This whole thing is amazing. Gay Ellen has tried to find her birth family for 37 years. Her need to find them became urgent when she learned that without a family medical history, she was unable to have coverage for genetic testing. Having the BRCA test would allow me to make the decision whether I want to um, go forth with um, having my breast removed. This is from my insurance company. According to the clinical information provided, you do not have family members with breast or ovarian cancer. I don't have a right to have this test being an adoptee. Not only I can't protect myself, I can't protect my daughters or my granddaughter, as any mother would want to protect their children. 
my breast surgeon and my gynecologist wrote letters on my behalf when I petitioned the judge to find out if I have cancer in my genes. And the judge denied me the right to have my records open. Our courts have long held that the confidentiality of these records promotes an important state interest in the sanctity of the family unit created by adoption. In order to assist persons in situations such as yours, our legislature has created the confidential intermediary process. The confidential intermediaries are able to access Gay Ellen's original birth certificate and do a search. They can't find her mother, but they are able to find her father. Unfortunately, he's no longer alive, and because he isn't able to give permission, the intermediaries can't provide Gay Ellen any information about him. They finally closed the case, so we can't go any further with this. I just don't know where to go anymore. So having this chance to get my birth certificate is going to be... Uh, I just can't even imagine, because it hasn't been my mindset for over 30-odd years that I'm finally going to have that piece of paper in my hand. You never thought you'd be doing this? No, I never <laughs> did. <laughs> It's, it's emotional to me because I see their struggles. Right. I see their struggles. I know. And here we are. Oh. Oh, it's all there. <laughs> it's all there. She's from Alabama, Madison County, Alabama. We've been looking in the wrong There's places. There's her name. There's her signature. <laughs> it's her name. Oh. Unbelievable. No, this is such a blessing. I was so it's afraid. So much information on it, doesn't it? Yeah. I I don't even know the words to describe. To be looking at my mother and father on paper and knowing what their names are, it's just, um, it's just so um, amazing. And you have siblings. While three confidential intermediaries, costing almost a thousand dollars, were never able to find Gay Ellen's birth mother, Gay Ellen herself is able to locate her family within weeks and learns her birth mother has died. It's over. The 37 year search is over. And um, I spoke to my oldest sister on Sunday. You mentioned that you saw our, our other sister on the internet. And I said, yeah. And you said you look like her? And I said, yeah. And she goes, well, she looks just like our mother, so you must look exactly like mom. <laughs> oh my, <laughs> that I look just like my mother. That all the time I've been looking in the mirror, I've been looking at my mother. I did find out that my birth mother had breast cancer and had her breast removed. So, as hard as it is to hear that, it's a relief to know that because now I can get the proper care for myself and my daughters. While Gay Ellen's search has primarily been about learning her medical background, Finding her birth family members, ultimately, is equally important to her. I told Chris I should get a little plaque, put it right here, and say, anybody related to Jack Thompson, please go. I'm looking for my family. That is my original birth certificate with my father's name on it. And a picture of me when they brought me home from Chicago. I am named after him. And uh, I'd so like to learn more about who my father was. So 
Oh, you're at your sister's house. I'm back. at my sister's. Yes. Hi. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> my uh, big little sister. Yeah. <laughs> so this this is the ticket that got me where I am today. Otherwise, I never would have found. So what do you think now? Lost years? <laughs> but this time you don't get to be alone. Mm -hmm. See? There is no alone business no more. Okay, here we go. Now wait, here's the picture. You gotta smile. Hey, and don't make goofy faces. Jeez. <laughs> Not everyone gets closure. Over a hundred adoptees receive notices that the state's unable to find a record of their birth. And a tiny number receive a record that's blank, containing no information at all. Tom is really excited and nervous and afraid to open it. And we're both reading it together and, and we were both just floored. I just kept looking and looking for something on it. According to the non-identifying information given to Tom by his adoption agency, his mother gave birth to him prematurely in her parents' house. She concealed her pregnancy. She concealed it the whole eight months. She had the baby at home, and that's when the parents found out she was even pregnant. A doctor was summoned, and later, filling out the birth record, he scribbled the words, does not desire name on certificate, in the box for mother. It's unclear who requested this action, but it is clear from the non-identifying information that Tom's birth mother was afraid of her parents. Tom, who is 63 and has been searching for over 20 years, called the adoption agency for help. But even though they know his birth mother's name, they can't release it to him. It was really killing me on the phone with her because she said she was looking at the name right now and wouldn't tell me it. Many people don't know this, but nothing has changed for the agency. Illinois adoption agencies are bound by state law. We cannot release identifying information without consent from the birth parents. And the law that I'm referring to is the Illinois Adoption Act. And it specifically says that disclosure of identifying information in violation of this act is a class A misdemeanor. Personally, I would lose my job, I would lose my license, and um, the license of the agency would be placed in jeopardy. I don't know, it's just another dead end. You just start over again. Every time we get somewhere, it's nowhere. The birth of my first daughter is really what made me want to search for my birth parents. Holding a child of my own and realizing how could a woman go through this and not feel something toward a child that she gave up for adoption. My parents are so loving and wonderful. They felt that it was completely unnatural for me to have any interest in my birth family. Their initial reaction was, well, what did we do wrong? I started searching in late 97, early 98. I requested information from the cradle. They sent me background information. This was the exciting one, which told me what my mom looked like and how old she was and what color her eyes were. And I do know that I wasn't given a name at birth. The birth mothers, maybe they weren't allowed to give their babies names. The agency named me Baby Girl. My birth mom, I've written letters to her and the agency told me that she's gotten them. She never really responded back. And that was, that was, that was devastating. I would love to know my birth mom's name. I just, I can't explain why it's inherent. It's just a part of me that I would want to know. I'm certainly hoping that she's not one of that, you know, little 1% of the birth parents that have come forward to request that they keep it private. But I have to be realistic because uh, that's a very real possibility. My heart is pounding. Okay.
I got a birth certificate. Now I can't see because my eyes are full of tears. Oh, it has her name. <laughs> and she has the same middle name as me. My first name is Ann and her middle name is Ann. <laughs> Her name is Ruth Ann. It has her mother's full name, which was Beverly Ann. <sighs> wow. Um, does not have my father's name. That's okay, I didn't expect that. It is the mother. Wait. <gasps> Oh, she named me. <laughs> she gave me a name. I was told I wasn't given a name. <laughs> she did name me. <laughs> oh, I totally didn't expect that. Okay, so she named me Ruth Ann, and her name is Beverly Ann. Oh wow, that's really, really cool. <laughs> so, here's my document. I don't know if you can see. Maybe I will be able to find yearbook pictures because I know she doesn't want contact, but wow, this is really cool. Okay, I'm gonna shut it off now. And uh, I just happened to hit my AOL email. The very first email said a woman's name that I didn't recognize. And then it just said, your birth father. She just explained, hey, I don't know any other way to say this, but I'm dating your birth father, and I know who he is. And he's been looking for you for many, many years. He's not really computer savvy, so to speak, so I offered to help him. I have many posts online on reunion registry site she did a google and i was the first one she found she found it within 15 minutes incidentally he's been calling the cradle on my birthday in hopes to make contact with me to tell me happy birthday every year the agency never revealed any of this to me when they knew full well that since 1997 that I have this interest. I, I picked up the phone and I was like, okay, wait, I think I need my inhaler. <laughs> I couldn't breathe. <laughs> like, I was so nervous. I thought I was going to have an anxiety attack. He just started talking and telling me everything. And to hear my entire story, finally, at last, after 44 and a half years, it's gave me a sense of calmness and completeness and like everything I searched for was not in vain, that I didn't do it in vain. If I was to not take another breath, uh, I feel I have completed the circle. I mean, I have found her. I'm, I'm happy. I'm tickled. I'm tickled pink that, that she hasn't uh, disowned me. Um, not yet. I, yeah. <laughs> she makes that very clear every once in a while. <laughs> it took a little while for us to start exchanging emails. So I wasn't sure I was going to recognize her, obviously, because I haven't met her. Jenny had provided lots of pictures. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure I'd be able to pick her out in the crowd in case the place was busy. <laughs> As it happened, there was nobody there but us. <laughs> so 
so when I walked in, she was already sitting down. <laughs> and I was like, well, that has to be her. <laughs> I think I just reached over and grabbed your hand, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I have your hand. <laughs> and we talked for five and a half hours. <laughs> And then we finally decided we'd better go back home to our families. There's my letter to you. Yeah, I recognize the paper. So, Tracy wrote you a letter. You didn't respond. No, I didn't. I wasn't quite sure how to respond. That was really what it was. How, how do you tell someone, after all these years, why you gave them up? There was all that shame you th that you lived with. And I did for years. And to a certain respect, I still do. There are still people that I would not feel comfortable telling after all these years. So many memories came flooding back about the agony you go through before you give up a child for adoption. I got to go down to the nursery and look at her through the windows. I wasn't allowed in the nursery, nor could I hold her. Really? Really. That was... That was the rule? Mm-hmm. That was the rule. I don't remember them ever saying that your children would never come look for you. It was more or less said, I couldn't come back to them and say, I'd like to take her home with me. Legally, I wouldn't have a leg to stand on. They made that perfectly clear. We read it in the newspaper. And Bill saw it first, my husband. He goes, have you seen this new law? I'm like, no, I don't know what you're talking about. So he handed me the article about it. So I went online and got the papers, the redaction papers. I had completely filled them out, had them notarized. I bundled them all up because we were getting ready to go to Florida, put them in a nice envelope. And so when I get down there, then I'll sign them. It didn't happen. I got them back out and I read through them and I thought, why would I do that? Yay. I think I wanted to find them. <laughs> I wasn't ever going to show up at your door. I might have driven down your street. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say it was pretty uplifting to finally let it out, especially to the people closest to me. I feel a huge change. I, I had conceded to the fact that I was going to go to the grave and not know these little things about my birth family or about myself. I see a new beginning in my life that I didn't think I was going to get which really makes me happy. What happened when Illinois provided adoptees access to their original birth certificates? An equally important question to ask is, what would have happened if they'd done this sooner? I'm sorry, buddy. So we didn't get to meet her. I'm sorry. The nephew of my birth mother says that she used to say on occasion, now there's a little boy out there somewhere. If anybody ever needs help, take care of him. Dennis thought that was just another noble thought from, from Mary. But maybe she was referring to me. The fact that you were able to find out that mm -hmm. your mother, who's a first degree relative, had breast cancer, might allow you to get this test. They did the test, and it's negative. <laughs> Is that fabulous or what? <laughs> My birth sister, she is a very cool person. It was Super Bowl Sunday when me and her first met, and I'm a big San Francisco 49er fan, and I'm ready to watch that game and everything. And I didn't even watch the game. I sat talked with her at Panera Bread for six hours. <laughs> it was just so much of a connection that I felt. I'm going to meet my dad. I did the Fairford Court during cross check. Yeah, it kept it from the that was like a call. Oh my god. I'm glad you made it, my gosh. It was amazing. Always the fight. They said, here, sit in the captain's chair. That, that piece of paper changed my whole life, changed my world. I'm 58, 
And now, finally, I feel like a part of my family. Hi, Mom. <laughs> Do you know how old you are today? 93. Now make a wish and then blow out the candle. Happy 93, Mom. I would so have loved to have had this part of me while my dad was alive and my mother was well. And I, I feel like I could have been so much more present as a person in every place in my life, in every relationship. All that from a piece of paper. You were... Holy smokes. 12 pounds, 5 pounds. <laughs> oh my word. It's been a problem I've been dealing with since I've been a kid. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. I read that wrong. This time? Yes, it is. I'm sorry. It was 12.50 12 12 p.m. <laughs> you know, there always will be adoption. There will always be uh, children separated from their original families, from their birth families. And, and so it's not about that. It's about not having secrecy and having shame about it, you know, and, and being able to be a part of your, your entire family. That's what it's really about. It gives me kind of a warm glow to knowing that we can bring it all together and, and the past can finally just be behind us. We can just move forward now. And that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. I felt sort of lost and not knowing who I am and part of my identity and it has completely filled all that in. I, I wish more people realized how important this is to people, how so deeply emotional and touching and important this is for people. So yeah, that's amazing how a simple piece of paper can change your life. It's, it's truly amazing. In the first year the new law is in effect, 8,145 Illinois adopted citizens received their original birth certificates. Only 47 received a record that it had a birth parent's name removed. The lady from Cook represents Fagnalls. Mr. Speaker, ladies and gentlemen of the House, it is time that justice is done. Please vote aye. The lady moved passage of House Bill 5428. Voting is open. Have all voted who wish. House Bill 5428 is declared passed. For me to be able to look back at my career as an elected official, I mean, everybody wants a legacy and everybody wants to be known for something that they championed or something that they did. It still rocks my world. It's still something really big. My only wish is that every state in the union, that we can undo this painful time in, in the lives of so many people. Think about all the adoptees who can't do it. Think about all the people who just can't do it.